Let me go ahead and, and end that poll. So we are going to go ahead and get started. Um, if you guys have any questions as we're going, like I said, there's lots of folks in the room. They're going to be helping monitor the chat box and will kind of let me know if we need to stop and discuss something or hopefully they can resolve it with you via um, chat box as we go. So we're going to review the purpose, criteria, and the application process for 1819 model schools and go over in detail what the prerequisites are, the different criteria for the award levels, and then I'm going to show you what the online system looks like if you log in as a DC and then if you log in as a school. <laughs> so the purpose, again, keeping in mind, is the state level recognition for meeting some and, and I'm acknowledging that some of our criteria um, have been minimum. I know a lot of the feedback we've gotten from some of our districts is that, you know, we really want tougher criteria. Um, so, and, and it, we're just kind of at a minimum at the state level saying in terms of what we would like to see for implementation, fidelity, and student outcomes. And so if you guys at the district level want to require additional elements to receive model school, um, endorsements at that level, that's more than okay. Um, but we really are trying to make sure that we're recognizing effort and, and acknowledging folks that are trying to do um, the best that they can with PDF implementation. So hopefully those criteria are clear. Um, I'm not going to read that to you, but that link will take you to the website. So again, evidence of fidelity at Tier 1 and then evidence of um, some minimal criteria for student outcomes with respect to silver and gold. And you'll notice throughout the PowerPoint, I might have had a little fun with memes. So I hope it gives you a good chuckle because I had a good time with that. Um, so this is where the prerequisites can be found. And these are the um, broken down by what's required for fall. 2018, spring 2019, and then our end year cycle for 2019. So this is the handout that I was saying is probably really hard to see on the PowerPoint, um, but is available for download in the file pod. And so the biggest piece to 1819 model schools is that schools have to meet the prerequisites outlined in the handout, which include timely submissions and some minimal criteria for fidelity with respect to your walkthrough score and with respect to your BOQ score. So if you've met those prerequisites, the other big one, I'm sorry, is your um, district coordinator needs to recommend you. So if you've met all of those prerequisites, then you can log into the system and apply um, during the application window, which is June 18th through September 1st. So, um, do we have prerequisites for 1920? No, we don't, Jay. That's a really um, great question. And we are making bigger changes for 1920 that we haven't kind of finalized yet. So we'll be announcing those hopefully by the end of this school year so that you guys have a heads up for next year. This year, school year. Right. This year. So there was another question, um, I can't see it at the moment, but I think it was asking specifically with respect to the benchmarks of quality um, and maybe the walkthrough, what those minimum scores will be. So in the past, what we've done is calculate those at the end of each year. And last year, it was 80% for the benchmarks of quality and 60% for the tier one walkthrough. So it won't be less than those values, um, but based on our end year calculations, they could be higher or um, the prerequisites. Is there something I need to go through? No, I okay. think we get it. When should walkthroughs be completed and uploaded? Time now. Yeah, it's open now. Let me um, go ahead and go in order through the prerequisites really briefly, um, and you can follow along, follow along in your handout, and then I'll try to ask those in the room that are monitoring the chat box what questions still weren't answered. 
So the deadlines that have already passed are for the 1718 outcome data summary. If you are missing your outcome data summary or you wanted to make edits to that, um, that was due December 1st of 2018, as well as the fall pick was due by December 1st, 2018. So if you're unsure kind of the status of that, um, we're going to go over that in a few slides of how you can find out where you stand with respect to those prerequisites. For spring, which is now, um, we did not require the, the spring pick, which we're allowing more time for the tier one walkthrough to be scheduled, conducted, and entered. So we, we're encouraging districts to get started on that. If you haven't, um, we really encourage you to, to start using your time now to do those. Um, and those can be entered now anytime through June 15th. And then for end year, which for the implementation tools, um, I think we have that it opens around April 1st, where you can start entering your BOQ, your tier two and tier three TFI. And then your outcome data is really needs to be as close to the last day of school for students as possible. And that varies from district to district. But all of those are due by June 15th. All right, what questions did I? No, I think you got it. Yep. Okay. All right. And then, so specifically for the district coordinator in each district, um, you know, making sure that they're facilitating either the actual completion of the walkthrough, so they're the ones conducting it, or they're overseeing, you know, coaches visiting each other's schools um, to complete the walkthroughs. And um, sure, Jay, yeah, if you want to type your email in the chat box, I'd be happy to send you an email after this as well. Um, so the, the tier one walkthrough, it doesn't necessarily have to be conducted by the DC, but it really is um, kind of their role in making sure those are being completed, not by somebody at the school. So if it's a peer coach um, or another district PBIS team member, um, so that's kind of really their role in, as far as a prerequisite and then making sure that they're providing the recommendation in order for schools to apply. So one of the things that we have in place is that schools cannot apply, even though they, if they've met all of the other prerequisites, if they do not have that DC recommendation in the system. So this kind of gives, you know, we're, we're, we have a very high view of, from, from all the schools. And so it's really hard for us to see kind of what's really going on. And this is our way of helping to connect with what the district coordinators are seeing at the local level to make sure that they're kind of putting their stamp and endorsing each school as a model school. So we're gonna show you kind of what the new system looks like for DC recommendations as well. So if you're not sure where you stand with the prerequisites, you can log into PBSES and um, what you're gonna to wanna to look for as a school level person is your outcome data summary form. The date here for date submitted has to be before De December 1st, 2018. And that's for your 17, 18 school year. And then if your fall pick shows completed, you can click view and then look at the data submission for that as well. Um, your district coordinator could be could help you find that information and answer those questions for you. If you're a district coordinator, your PBS project TA person can help you find that information as well. I actually just sent everybody a report of where all the schools are in the state with prerequisites. So they have that information as of a couple days ago. So the um, application. Did you send it by email or uh, you sent it to the staff? Or yeah. You, yeah. So I sent all the PBS Project TA staff um, the most recent information about prerequisites, and they can hand share that information with the district coordinators in each district. So Tammy, if you're wondering um, and you're a DC, then you can go ahead and contact your PBS. TA person. So this is the application. Again, this is this piece of paper is just to kind of outline the criteria 
for bronze, silver, and gold model schools. The actual where you apply is in the online system, which we're going to demonstrate in a minute. So again, this text is very small. I encourage you to follow along on your handout. <laughs> all right, so the bronze criteria. Essentially, if you are meeting all of the prerequisites and you log in and submit an application during the open window, you are awarded bronze. So really bronze is recognizing kind of that timely evaluation and some minimum fidelity criteria for tier one PDS implementation. Um, so when you log in during the open window, then you will provide a short description of a PBS and how it's the positive impact that PBS has had. And that can be a story about, you know, the general impact on school climate and culture, or you can talk about the impact of PBS for a single student. One of the things that's new this year is that we are asking schools to enter their social media handles. So if your school has a Twitter page or a Facebook page, we're asking you to include that information because we want to we want to give some more shout outs and public recognition to model schools. And so when we do that on our social media pages, we want to be able to include the schools and districts as well. So for silver, um, silver model schools meet all of the bronze criteria and they exemplify improved student outcomes. Um, and so we define that as very minimal, meaning less than 5% increases over two years in ODR per 100 and OSS per 100. So if you experienced increases larger, 5% or larger, larger during those that time, the overall rates for 18-19 have to be in the lowest quartile, quartile for your school type. It's very confusing and it doesn't help that I can't speak clearly today, so I apologize. Um, we are not at this point sharing what those quartile quartile values are. Can I give it? Right. Well, we don't. Right. We don't know those. Yeah, we don't know those yet. So, it, but it will be based on what the rates are across the schools of your t a school type, and so if you are experiencing a greater than five percent increase but you're still having a low rate, you're still in that lowest 25% rate of referrals or suspensions, then even though you've increased, you, you're still at a very low rate. So that's our way of kind of compensating for the percentage increase. You may have a very low number or rate of incidences, and so we want to be able to compensate for that. And so I, I had a feeling that people were going to wonder what those cutoff scores were for elementary, middle, mm -hmm. high, all center. Um, and so we don't know that because we'll calculate that at the end of the school year when um, all of the end year outcome data is submitted. But for example, if your school goes from one office discipline referral per 100 to two office mm -hmm. discipline referrals per 100, um, and then from two ODR per 100 to four, that's two years of 50% increases, essentially, uh, which is, of course, larger than that 5%. But if your, your overall rate for the last year then is four ODRs per 100, which we don't have the numbers in front of us, but I'm going to guess is. <laughs> but we know from historical uh, <laughs> that, that unless we have an, an amazing <laughs> reduction in average rate for any school type, that would still be a very low rate. So that school in that case would still be silver, eligible for silver because, because of that overall rate per 100 for the 18, 19 year was very low. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that gives you an example um, to kind of understand all of that. Um, and then again, the silver schools, you need, still need to log in and submit your application and your description is talking and focusing on your engaging instructional approaches and your alternative to suspension strategies that you're using. So focusing on the improved outcomes piece there. And then gold. Oh, and this is what you'll see as far as your data. So. When you log in, um, it will take you to kind of your congratulations screen and it'll show you your outcomes, um, your change basically values from 16, 17, 17, 18, and then 17, 18, 18, 19. So you'll be able to have those in a bar graph form and also a table form. 
in your eligibility data page. So I'll show you, I'll show you that in a second, uh, but wanted to give you a visual. So, and I think Fran was actually asking for a visual. I'm wondering if this visual kind of does what you need it to, Fran. That's regarding the increase. Um, her original question was, could you please supply the example that you just gave in a visual somehow that we could explain properly to schools that are interested? Okay. So if this, I can, um, I don't know that I have that in the PowerPoint right now, but um, if this, uh, I can't even, I honestly can't read these values from here. <laughs> so the, the one on the right is ineligible. It's not, the silver criteria are not met because the increases are larger than 5% each time and over this, the 1819 value is very large. So their 1819 value, I can't even read it to be honest, but oh, 147 per 100. Okay. So that's beyond the lowest quartile for the, for the demo site that we've created at this point. But if this were to be like, let's say, a lower overall rate, the, the increase as, in terms of percent is still really large, but the overall rate is very low, this would be eligible. So Fran, I'm not sure if I just helped or made that more confusing, but I can provide what you're asking for. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, all right, so gold, Schools meet all of the silver criteria and they exemplify equitable outcomes. And this is defined by having zero subgroups um, with risk ratio values for ODR or OSS 2.5 or larger. So last year was three, this year we've kind of increased the bar a little bit. But remember your subgroups are only considered if 10 or more students in that subgroup with the high risk ratio experienced a discipline or suspension. So if you have very high risk ratios, but only two students were affected, then that wouldn't be cause for disqualification in this case. And then again, um, oops, that's just say gold. So you log in and submit your application and your um, description is just describing what you're doing to promote equitable disciplinary outcomes. So again, none of these responses are scored, but they are kind of your opportunity to brag about what you guys are doing at the school level. And we really want to hear about the creative strategies you're using and, um, you know, kind of what's going on at that school level that's helping to contribute to your positive outcomes. No, I just think those responses are, are valuable to us as a project, too, and just kind of knowing what's what's happening and giving us ideas and strategies. Yes. And I think we're, I would like to start using those, um, what you're providing in your application more and more. So just as a heads up, you know, we might include part of your response in a social media post or um, something like that. So just so you're aware. Okay, so what I've done here is just show you what your eligibility data page would say. So if you've met it, the criteria you might have no disproportionate groups found or your risk ratios are below the threshold um, of 2.5 or you might have an indicator that you've not met the gold criteria and that is because your risk ratios are high and the number of kids impacted is more than 10. All right, so what I've done in the next few slides is basically give you screenshots so you can refer to these later. Um, but I'm actually going to go ahead and just share my screen and do this live. So you can see, and you guys can see that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So from our homepage, which I always just type in flpbis.org. I know our actual website's longer, but it'll take you there as well. 
um, and you scroll down to the model school icon on the right hand side of the page. And, and this live binder here is where you can find a lot of great resources. I'll kind of show you that quickly. So that prerequisites handout is here, the application criteria. And as of recently, um, I just added the demonstration videos. So you can see kind of what it looks like to log in as a DC or a school. Did I go, was there like a delay? Was it very? No, it went, it's perfect. <laughs> and these are about five minutes each. So the idea being that you wouldn't have to watch this whole hour long webinar every time that you had a question about what the system can do or how to find something. So I'm going to quickly show you how to log in as a district coordinator first. And again, you're using your PVSES username and password. And if you're logging in as a district coordinator, be sure to, that you're selecting district as the access type. So when you first log in, all of the schools that are awaiting your recommendation will be listed for you. So these are the schools that have met all of the criteria except and are only missing your stamp of approval to be able to log in. And you can look at their award levels and I think this is eligibility data, yeah. And kind of see if you have questions or if everything makes sense. So maybe you had a question as to why test school was eligible for bronze and not something else. You can go ahead and click view and it will show you, you know, what disqualified them for silver. Yeah, so it will it will say, um, which was this was a really nice feature that Karen added, where you can easily see whether or not each award level criteria was easily met or not met. Okay. So once you let's see which ones was I going to do? I was going to do test school sixteen because this is a silver. We're going to recommend test school 36. And I feel really good about recommending these schools because I visited their schools and I've sat through a problem solving meeting and I looked at their data very closely and they're at, it's accurate. So I'm going to go ahead and select recommend for those three schools. And This is like has me locked in as which one? An FMHI person. Mm -hmm. Career. Um, anyway. You don't so. see all these things. <laughs> <laughs> so if and once you've recommended a school, then you'll see. So I just recommended 16, test school 36, and test school 46. And so those are listed in the recommended but not started column. So you can easily see the schools that have received your recommendation and they can log in, um, but they haven't done so yet. So those schools have not started their application, which is a good reminder to you to take a look at often. And then you can follow up with those schools and remind them to log in when the window opens and go ahead and submit their application. You can also see the schools that have started their application, but they haven't actually hit submit. Um, so these schools left their application in progress. You're definitely going to want to follow up with them towards the end of the throughout the end of August and making sure that they submit their application by the due date. And then you can see the schools that have submitted their final application. So these schools have logged in, they've submitted their application, and they've been awarded. So these are the schools that you can also then go up to download. And you can easily download their certificates and their ribbons in one easy folder. I know that was something that last year was kind of labor intensive for some of our district coordinators where you would have to go and log in school by school to be able to access that. So we're hoping that that feature makes it easier for you to access those things and print them and disseminate them for your schools. Oh, Fran, I think there. this is a relatively new um, way of doing it. Yeah, it's so. brand new this year. <laughs> yeah, it's a new feature this year. 
see we are the first first to see again mm -hmm. <laughs> um let's see what else so if you are coming in as a district coordinator you can select pbs model school applications and at that tab you can see the status of any school that has started an application so if a school has not started an application they're not going to be here um, the only place that you'll find them is on that recommendation tab is not started um prerequisites if they didn't meet the prerequisites right so you can sort this by application status as in progress submitted. You can look at different award levels or school types. If you had questions about wanting to look at all of your high schools that were awarded model schools, you can go ahead and do that. If you wanted to look at all of your um, bronze schools of any grade configuration, you can do that. And from this screen, then you can view their application. You can see what response they provided and view their certificate. You can also view their eligibility data. Can schools still print their own certificates? Yes. Okay. Um, and you can look school by school if you just want to look at a specific school. I know sometimes in the districts with tons of schools, it's easier just to pull them from a drop down menu. So the other thing you might want to do then is maybe you have a question around um, kind of what schools you know, you thought a school should be awaiting your DC recommendation, but they're not. Um, so you can click on not met. Now this does include the schools that are also missing your recommendation, but it also includes schools that are missing something else potentially. So let's say you had a question about why I test school 14. Oh, never mind. <laughs> um i think test school 10. yeah so test school 10 you can see didn't meet any of the prerequisites and so that's why they're not awaiting your recommendation so if you click on the view details here you'll see what's been submitted and um, kind of met and what's missing and then you can always return to the recommendation tab and this is where you can provide your recommendation so that schools can log in and apply, and you can kind of see where they're at in the application process. Questions about the DC login view before I switch to schools? Somebody was asking if the DCs need to recommend the schools. Yep. I'm saying yes. To prerequisite. So what was that test school 10 that I just looked at? Mm -hmm. That was missing them all? Yeah. Oh, it was test school 14, too, that was? Uh, um, that just had a DC recommendation. Mm -hmm. So test school 14 that we just noticed was just missing the DC recommendation. So if I try to log in as them, um, then they'll get this notification that says they can start. Oh, sorry. And then it'll say, sorry, you have not met all the prerequisites. And it'll show here that, sorry, the mouse is like skipping here. Um, and it'll show that they're missing that DC approval before they can log in and apply. All right, so let's log in as a school that can, can apply. Um, I'm going to show you a bronze first. And making sure that you're using your PBSES um, login for each school and selecting school from your access type. It'll give you a start message and then a congratulations message indicating you've met your prerequisites. And this first page is basically just general information about the school and mostly contact information for the person completing the application. Um, so this is going to be a place for us to be able to communicate with whomever over the summer if we have questions or issues about anything. Also for this email that you're putting in here, this is where your notification is going to be sent. 
So on the next page, you're going to question. Oh, you're going to type in your summary response and hit submit. And then once you hit submit, you're awarded immediately. And we're, we send you an email with your certificate and your digital ribbon. So you're going to want to make sure whoever's email is in this um, placeholder is, is kind of keeping an eye out for that email. The email will also include some really cool resources this year um, that we'll talk about in a minute. So if you use, if your school has a Twitter page, you can put your handle in here, or if your school has a Facebook page, you can put that in there. This is optional. And then for this test school 46, um, they've never been a model school, but what you'll what you should see here for your school is if you have ever been a model school, it will say yes. And then the last year that your school received that and the award level for that last year. Hit save and proceed and it gives you a congratulations message um, based on your award level. So this school is eligible to be bronze and it shows that they've met all of those prerequisites and gives them an option to type their short, shorty, mm -hmm. short summary here of awesome PBIS practices. <laughs> and then if you as a team wanted to kind of take a look at your response or you just weren't ready to hit submit, um, you can save it and come back to it later. And you can see that all of your answers have been saved. Uh, or if you're like, had questions about your why didn't I make silver yeah <laughs> um, you can click on eligibility data and see that you know silver criteria were not met and because the increases were very large and the overall rate for 1890 was very large it'll show you kind of what was missing there um, so let's say you're ready you submit your final application and again this this response isn't going to disqualify you. It's just your chance to brag. And we really want to hear about all the cool stuff. And once you hit submit, you're going to see a really awesome <laughs> YouTube video. <laughs> so if it's blocked on your district servers, um, I just want to point out it's on YouTube so you can take a look at home when you're, <laughs> so you don't miss it. Um, no, if it's, it's just us congratulating you, and then you can save, print your certificate and digital ribbon. So one reminder is that you can right click and save it on your computer, and or you can hit this print button. I know there were some questions about people didn't really like the preferences set up with the print certificate button here. So if you wanted to, you could always save the image on your desktop, let's say. I'm just going to say model school certificate and then it's a file on your computer that you can manipulate and you know save it as a PDF or open um, in different formats or post in different formats that you would like to do. Same thing with your digital ribbon. Ooh. Um, if you wanted to Right click, save it, or download, either way. Um, those are options, and we're really encouraging folks to post these on your social media and your email signatures, um, just kind of wherever you think is a good place. Is there a question? Mm -hmm. All right, so you've hit submit, you're awarded. I really encourage you to hit view all applications, um, hit home and then view all applications and just verify that your 1819 application is submitted and everything is good, it's showing up in here. Just And as anytime there's tech issues, be sure to email your district coordinator immediately so that there's a record of it. Um, and we just kind of have, have that written trail. So, We should do. Should I demo silver and gold? If you have one. Okay. Um. Let's see. So I'll show you what it looks like to log in as a school that's eligible for silver. 
And if there's time, Fran wanted to uh, know if you would be talking about the walkthrough form scoring. Yeah. I'm showing them where the thing is. Mm -hmm. The chat. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> so again, when you log in, um, it'll just ask you for contact information for the first person completing the application. And the email address of the person and their Twitter handle. I don't like caps with one. Same thing here with the first page, nothing's different. And then the next page will show a congratulations message of letting you know that the school is eligible to be silver. And it'll show you the graphs of your data showing that you uh, had good outcomes um, and didn't kind of violate the criteria there. So then you would provide your short summary here. And same thing, you can save it and return to it later. Take a look at your eligibility data. So let's go and do that, save it. And then what you'll notice about your eligibility data for this one is that silver will be met and then gold will say not met and you'll see that there's a few risk ratios larger than 2.5 and then if you're ready you can say submit and you'll see the same awesome video um, and your silver model school certificate and your silver digital ribbon all right, and then again, you're going to want to go home and just take a look and make sure that it says submitted. You can also look at previous years if you wanted. And I will also quickly show you a gold. All right, so the intro is the same for everybody. Quickly put in your contact information. And then it says, Congratulations, this school is eligible to be a gold um, and explains the criteria there. For this school, they had no disproportionate groups at all found. You might also see kind of like the table we did on the other screen. Um, with some maybe some yellow values or green values, but uh, obviously, ho hopefully, if everything's working right, you wouldn't see any risk ratios larger than 2.5. And so, here your short description is talking, asking you to brag about and share with us what you're doing to promote equitable PBS. Same thing you can save and submit later. Take a look at your eligibility data and then submit. And so this is what your gold certificate will look like and your gold digital ribbon. Sounds good. All right. So let's go back to, let's get through these because I showed you all this, but if I um, just wanted you to have kind of that, the screenshots for later reference. So you didn't, if you didn't want to sit through this hour long webinar later, you didn't have to. Um, and some school screenshots for you. And again, oh, I don't know why I can't. The shorter demos of this for just a school level gold, silver, and bronze are in the live binder as well. So can easily show those at coaches meetings and things like that. Um, one thing I did want to hear from you guys a little bit, if you could use the chat box, is just share with us how you share your good news for model schools. Um, and, and maybe some ideas that have come to mind in terms of sharing your certificates and your digital ribbons. Some of the ideas that we've heard about and our schools are using are on the screen, but you know, can share with us any 
new creative ways? In email signature, Facebook, and bulletin boards. Ooh, in their email signature. Nice. That's cool. Like you're a PBIS gold model school. Mm -hmm. I know there's always some friendly competition in districts, so I know that some mm -hmm. of our schools have done that. That's awesome. As they're emailing, especially some administrators when they're e e emailing each other, mm -hmm. it's always kind of in there, <laughs> <laughs> which is nice, nice friendly competition. Oh, another question regarding the walkthrough procedures. Okay. Yeah, so let's, let's go ahead and get to that. Let me make sure. Oh, um, also, so this is what your email will look like each time you hit, each time a school submits their final application, the person that put their email in that little box that I was showing you for the school level, they'll get the copy and then the district coordinators will all be CC'd and also get a copy. So also a heads up to all the DCs, if you have, you know, 100 schools that are going to be applying and you want to mm -hmm. put a rule in your Outlook that's going to put them all in a folder, um, that's an option for you. This is the email it'll be coming from, but the certificate and the ribbon will be included as attachments. And um, Nicole Fentel, who's um, newer to our project, also here with us, created a really cool um, social media kit that is going to be included here. I don't know if you want to say anything. Sure. Yeah, so the email will look a little bit different. We're hoping to include a link to a Live Finder resource um, on our website that has a social media kit. So it'll give you some ideas on how you can share um, your model school status with others, including some templates of messaging that you might want to use for social media or for newsletters or even a press release. Um, so, so that's something to look out for when you apply. It's very, very fancy. Yeah, it makes it a lot easier for folks if they just want to shoot it out. You don't have yeah. to design something. And I even for the social media example, I, I made it less than 280 characters. So if you have a Twitter, you can, you can post it on Twitter. <laughs> All right, so um, some pro tips. Is Ashley on? Ashley makes it. No, she's. Yeah. Okay. Um, so walkthroughs, pro tip number one, begin scheduling these, getting these out of the way um, sooner rather than later because the closer you get to testing time, the diff more difficult it is to get in and also see these things posted on the wall. A lot of things have to come down. Um, but also keeping things organized as you're doing them. So as you're taking pictures when you're in the schools, making sure you're saving those with the right school name in the file name. Um, and keeping the, you know, an electronic copy of the walkthrough organized along with the pictures if you want. I just know that if you're not able to or aren't entering them right away, you can kind of get lost and forget which picture goes with which walkthrough and it can become a, uh, more difficult for you in the long run. So some other things that our districts are doing is using coaches meeting to help schools make sure they meet the model school criteria. So making sure they're problem solving, increasing implementation fidelity, improving outcomes. One big thing is that making sure you're taking a look at your referrals and suspensions per 100. So some schools and districts just look at the overall rates, um, but not that per 100 value and come to the end of the school year where they see per 100 in our system and are a little surprised or unaware of what those data are so just a reminder to be looking at per 100 over time and thinking now about making sure schools have some time to submit data and DCs have time to look at the applications and recommend them um, so one thing is we've seen schools wait until kind of closer to the deadline later in August um, which it's fine, um, but since you're awarded immediately, it's always nice to leave a really exhausting end of school year with some good news. <laughs> so, um, you know, if you can do it before everyone's out for summer, it's nice always to leave on a more positive note. Um, and some other tips, making sure you're not relying on just one person. I got carried away with the memes on this page, Bad. <laughs> Not relying on one person to submit all the evaluations uh, or your application on time. 
because it never fails that um, you know something comes up last minute and impacts that. So if you have a couple people on the team that are tag teaming and working together to make sure that you know your your walkthroughs in or your BOQs in on time and applications in, then if something comes up with the other person, you're still covered. And then now, same thing with tech issues. So we don't have like a tech team on hand. So if you have issues that come up, either when you're entering your evaluations or your application, be sure to email your district coordinator immediately. That's kind of like your ticket out of issues free card. <laughs> so we have a couple of um, questions, comments. Um, Paige said that last year it was easy to upload the pictures for the expectations, but this year the size limit there was a size was limit. A, yeah, it, the process is easy. The problem is that there is a size limit. And so I know that some people had difficulty and uh, we ended up, we had a link for how to compress. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that fine? No, I'm oh. just saying that was the process by oh. which many people had to um, make the file small enough was to go through the process of, because we have limited Yep. server space and right and so you probably will yeah. still have to compress those files to make them smaller mm -hmm. do you want to show them where the uh walk through um, the chat is. and then chat is. yes so, yeah, Susie was, was asking that. about if they're going to be conducted the same way as last year the walkthroughs and yes they are the, they didn't the change at all event. this year the I'm walk -through. Also looking at DC. Right. yeah so it will look familiar to you um Susie. And Rebecca Keenan, um, I know that I have updated our enrollment data. It says on the website that it's not available. Um, for, for the current school year, we are uh, in the process now of getting the data from the Florida Department of Education and putting it into our system. Um, and then once it's in there, what we encourage is it, we actually put that as a task to do at um, end year, which those mailings will go out um, at the very end of March, beginning of April, right around in there, is when that opens so, so that you schools will have, you know, that last bit of time in the school year to adjust their enrollment because we take this the schedule to which was done in the fall. We know those numbers. Well, enrollment, as soon as you write it down, it's wrong. So, um, you know, we encourage you to wait, uh, the schools to wait towards the end of the school year to adjust their enrollment, particularly as it relates to um, the gold and the equity issues, because you're, um, it really becomes very important that your numbers are current and make sense regarding how you're reporting your discipline incidents. So if it's cumulative, then you have cumulative enrollment, or if it's static based on who's in your building at that point in time and the discipline events for those students, then you want just it, your enrollment to reflect those students. So it's um, in, that's why we encourage people to wait towards the end of the year to make those changes. So I can't find a school that's missing a walkthrough to show, but um, I will show, I'll get through the rest of these slides really quickly and show you um, a, at least a completed walkthrough and where to find the resources for it. So this is where on our homepage at the bottom, it says chat schedule and you click on that live binder icon. This is where the recording will, for this will be posted and you can share that with your team members or, you know, one or two other team members that you're going to be working with to get the application done. Um, and I forget what the person's name was. I was asking you about 1920, but um, we are going to be announcing those early in 1920. We do know the details of those, but for now we do know that at least there's going to be an increased focus on tier two and tier three. So it's a heads up for the schools and the districts um, coordinators to begin thinking about planning tier two and tier three training and implementation supports over the summer. Um, and a heads up for schools that if the office is great, um, if you, you know, haven't kind of explored those advanced tiers, you might want to be thinking about doing that over the summer. 
We're asking about a walkthrough minimum score. Is it's the same for all? It's the levels. same for all levels. It's a prerequisite. And so yeah. last year it was sixty percent, um, and just like the BOP last year was eighty percent. We're gonna calculate those at the end of this year, and it might go up, but at least it won't. I mean, it, that's kind of our minimum. Um, it might not change. It depends on mm -hmm. the eighteen, nineteen, like state level averages that we get from our calculations at that point. Um, so this is just a reminder that the next chat is on the 7th. Okay, I'm going to go back to sharing my screen and share with you where. So if you go to our homepage and then click on model schools in the um, kind of first live binder under training resources, you'll see revised walkthrough chat. And this is where you can watch basically the online chat just like this that went over how the new walkthrough was conducted and entered. And I think during this one we had a few districts kind of share some tips that they did for mm -hmm. um, they do it. managing walkthroughs and conducting them. So that's where you can find that. Um, I was trying to find a school that was missing a walkthrough where I could show you how it looks to enter one. Um, but essentially, this is somewhat what it looks like. You can go ahead and type in your expectations, and this is a completed form, so it's not really a good example. It's oh, completed because it it's, it's like the test site. Oh, okay. yeah. The minimum walkthrough score for this school year is still 60. Though. Well, it says it'll be at least 60. Okay. So the minimum criteria, just like for the benchmarks of quality, is going to be at least for the walkthrough at least 60 for the benchmarks of quality at least 80. Okay. So uh, if by some, you know, if if the average score is you know 90, right, it might be a little higher than 60. But uh, that's why we because it's a model school. Um, so yeah. We so look, wait till we get the data. And. I tried to highlight, so it evolves each year based on state level implementation rates. Um, the minimum for 18-19 will be at least 60. Same, that kind of same concept applies to the walkthrough. I think it even says that. Um, somebody wants to know where to find the walkthrough form. So I'm trying to kind of walk through where that would be. Well, if if you go to the evaluation. So from our, our home page, if you scroll down to the evaluation icon, which is just above model schools. I think it's in there also because we opened it early. Um, yeah. Um, and Susie, uh, somebody from outside of your school would do the walkthrough. So it would be either another coach from another school or your district coordinator that would complete the walkthrough for your school. And Frances, she has schools that want to review it for themselves. Mm -hmm. They want to review yeah. it. Oh, okay. Um, it, yeah, in fact, I think uh, one of the strategies that somebody else had was having um, people do walkthroughs, like practice walkthroughs mm -hmm. at, at their mm -hmm. schools, just to kind of. Mm -hmm. So I, and I, um, I think this, I won't put them, I don't know if they want me to share this about them, but they're on the thing. So um, a district started recently using this and the principal said that they were going to start using it themselves as they were walking around more often. And I'm, I'm assuming they meant kind of um, some of these things, like when they're visiting classrooms, looking for these things and asking students the questions and mm -hmm. the staff the questions so that they could have, a, they liked having a gauge of how PBS was going in the school. So it can be used internally, but for the final one that's entered into our system, we ask that it's conducted by somebody external to the school. Hey guys. Um, just making sure I didn't miss anything. No, I think that's it. And if you guys um, can't find something when you... 
You saw my email on there a lot. I was trying to avoid that, but <laughs> feel free to email us, email your PBS <laughs> TA person, um, and we can kind of point you in the right direction. Um, I think that's it. Then if we'll stick around. For, oh, wait, I have one more poll. I almost forgot. Mm -hmm. All right, so if you could, before you um, exit the webinar, complete the poll today, it'd be helpful. And um, yeah, we'll stick around the room and answer any questions that come in. And thank you for your time. And this